right, begin. What's going on, y'all, and welcome back to the channel. First and foremost, I hope everybody is happy and healthy this morning. That's the most important thing. Now, before we go any further, I want to ask you guys a favor. If you don't mind, go ahead and hit that like button and also punch that share button so we can get this channel recognized, you dig? And also, if you're on Instagram, you can follow me at TV. That's a for sure way that we can stay connected, all right? Now, with that said, let's go ahead and get down to business. And I want to talk about the situation that's going down with Wendy. So we all know that Wendy is fighting to get her bank accounts restored due to the fact that there are accusations surrounding her health, stating that she may be suffering from early stages of dementia. And so the bank decided to take it upon themselves to actually freeze her account so she wouldn't make no mistakes in spending large amounts of money and things of that nature. But the problem is is that wendy hasn't made no outrageous purchases and so uh wendy has filed a suit stating that they're well outside of their jurisdiction to actually uh freeze her accounts now not only are the banks citing that they're trying to protect wendy from herself they're also trying to protect wendy from being taken advantage of but now it seems that wendy is on the other side of a lawsuit right because she's being sued herself now this took place in 2020 and i'm pretty sure that some of y'all are privy to this information there's a guy by the name of Daryl Wilkins that was taking pictures out on a soccer field where kids were playing or a football field, one of the two. And basically, Hillary Duff, who's a pop singer, approached him and asked him, said, yo, why are you taking pictures of these kids? What are you doing? And Daryl Wilkins position was, I'm doing nothing illegal. This is photography and things of that nature. And he assured Hillary that he was doing nothing wrong. And that again, it was legal for him to be out there to take whatever type of pictures he wanted. But Hillary position was, this is weird. This is creepy. You know, there's kids playing around and you know, mothers and other parents out here are just worried about the fact that you're out here taking pictures of their children. And so basically, let me go ahead and play you guys the clip of the interaction between Hillary Duff and Daryl Wilkins, and then I'll be right back. Who are you here with? Who are you here with? I'm here with me. With you? Yes. Do you know any of the people on the team? No. Oh, can you stop taking pictures of the kids, please? It's legal. It's it's making it's, me feel really uncomfortable. Well, you shouldn't feel uncomfortable. You want me to show you ID? I'm not asking for your ID. I'm asking you to stop taking pictures of our seven-year-old children if you don't know anyone that's here. But it's legal. I'm asking you, human to human, as a mother, if you don't know anyone here, can you please stop taking pictures of our children playing football this morning. But I'm just telling you, it's not illegal. That's okay that well, you're saying I'm, it's... I'm taking pictures. I'm practicing photography. And Can I'm you practice to, it on another... I, on I'm another... not here to scare you or anything like that. You, but you, you are? Your, your, your paranoia is unwarranted. That's what I'm telling you. No, it's just an it, uncomfortability it, factor that these are seven-year-old children and you don't have a child here. What's that got to do with anything? Well, there are children, and we would like to protect them. So, if you could take pictures well, and practice you, your photography you somewhere else, taking pictures of them is not. It, okay. What about other? Then I will just post this to my 15 million followers on Instagram and let people know how creepy it is that this is what you're choosing to do on your Saturday morning. And make all home. of our creepy the whole. All of these parents with these no, kids. You're making it creepy because you're the one. All right, so you guys saw that exchange. I must say that she came across being a little bit of a Karen, but I do understand where she's coming from. Now, the issue with this is, is that Hillary Duff appeared on the Wendy Williams show and they talked about the situation. So Hillary alluded to the fact that she thought it was creepy, extremely suspicious behavior on the part of Daryl and Wendy agreed. Now, Daryl's stance in all of this is that he feel that when Hillary appeared on the Wendy show, that basically both of them engaged in reprehensible and despicable conduct, including by innuendo that he was a ped. And so he's saying that he was taking photos as a photographer. He wasn't the paparazzi or stalker with no malice intent or evil wrongdoing. Now, Daryl claims that his reputation has been damaged, severely damaged from all of this. And so, but Wendy's team is asking for the lawsuit to be dropped. They're stating that Wendy should not be held liable due to the fact that she has the right to put her First Amendment practice to use. She gave honest and fair commentary in regards to the situation 
and she didn't say anything defamatory uh, when it came to Daryl and, you know, as far as him being a pet. So at the end of the day, Daryl is suing Wendy Williams, the production team, and also Hillary Duff. Now, the judge has yet to make a ruling yet, and so we'll just have to see what that ruling is in the next coming days. But this is the thing. Like I said previously, I understand Hillary's position on this, right? First and foremost, she is a celebrity. Um, there were a lot of kids around and celebrity or not. When you see somebody out there taking pictures, right? You can be a regular Joe or regular, you know, Nancy or uh, Monique or whoever you are working a nine to five. It doesn't matter your status as far as being a celebrity or not. When you see somebody out there taking pictures of your child or of children, you know, it's in your nature to see what the hell is going on. Right. But I do feel that Hillary went a little bit too far. The way she phrased her questions and things like that, it made it seem like he may be trying to do some type of harm in my estimation, the way she was questioning him. And you have to ask the question, if he had the same hue as her, would Hillary even have asked that question in the first place? Now, I will say this, Daryl was right. He had every right to take photographs, right? It's not against the law, but I'm thinking like it's so many options, so many other places where you can take photographs at. Why did you choose that specific place, right? You know that people were gonna have questions, you know, parents and things of that nature, they're protective of their children, right? So it is puzzling that he would choose to take photographs in that type of setting, right? With all the other options out there. But anyway, what I wanna do right here is I want to transition to the next topic and I want to discuss the Obamas and this whole Spotify thing right now back in 2019 the Obama signed a three-year hundred million dollar deal with Spotify and so their platform brought shows such as Barack and Bruce Springsteen's Renegades Born in the USA the Michelle Obama podcast tell them I am and the big hit show to the embattled platform now Joe Rogan who is also a big dog on Spotify who's getting paid a hundred million dollars has been in the midst of a lot of controversy lately due to the fact that a lot of people feel that he's bringing individuals on his platforms that are spreading misinformation in regards to the pandemic. Now, in the result of Joe Rogan spreading misinformation on his podcast, you had artists such as Indy Ivory, uh, Neil Young, Bruce Springsteen, they elected to pull their music off of Spotify. Now, Joe Rogan took to his platform to apologize in a sense, basically saying that he didn't mean to spread misinformation and the doctors that he had on his show, he just wanted to hear their perspectives and things of that nature. And that most of the time when he does the shows, he doesn't know what he's going to talk about. And that's what makes the show so interesting because he just shoots from the hip basically, right? And so in the midst of all that, some resurfaced clips came around of Joe Rogan repeatedly using the N-word multiple times, right? And so this particular one, this particular clip that I'm about to show you is really, really, you know, the one that really got to me the most. And so let me go ahead and play that clip. I gotta go to uh, one where there's Planet of the Apes, man. We're gonna go see Planet of the Apes. So I look on the iPhone app and it says, okay, take me to this one. And the guy goes, okay, I goes, is that in a good neighborhood? He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Guy barely speaks English. He takes us there. We get out, and we're giggling. Oh, we're going to go see Planet of the Apes. We walk into Planet of the Apes. <laughs> we walked into Africa, dude. We, we, we walked in the door, and there was no white people. There was no white people. And I was trying to make the story entertaining, and I said, we got out, and it was like we were in Africa. It's like we were in Planet of the Apes. I did not, nor would I ever say that black people are apes. We uh, we can't go to there. So I go, you got to go to uh, one where there's Planet of the Apes, man. We're going to go see Planet of the Apes. So I look on the iPhone app, and it says, okay, take me to this one. And the guy goes, okay. I go, is that in a good neighborhood? He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Guy barely speaks English. He takes us there. We get out, and we're giggling. Oh, we're going to go see Planet of the Apes. We walk into Planet of the Apes. <laughs> We walked into Africa, dude. We, we, we walked in the door, and there was no white people. There was no white people. I did not, nor would I ever say that black people are apes, but it sure fucking sounded like that. And I immediately afterwards said, that's a racist thing to say. 
So after all these clips resurfaced of Joe Rogan repeatedly using the N-word, Spotify's CEO Daniel Egg decided to respond. So it says here, Spotify CEO Daniel sent a letter to the company employees on Sunday apologizing for the controversy surrounding Joe Rogan, but also backing the podcaster saying he did not believe that Silence and Joe is the answer. The company was reported to have taken down about 70 episodes of the Joe Rogan experience over the weekend. On Saturday, Rogan publicly apologized for instances when he used the N-word in past podcasts. Oh! Oh! Hey! Now, when I tell y'all that lit a fire up underneath me, man, he's basically saying, hey, sorry for the comments, but we're keeping Joe. You know what I'm saying? We invested a hundred million dollars in Joe and we're not losing that. And hey, get over your feelings. Now, what's puzzling about this, and I don't care about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. I'm talking about the Obamas, the former president of the United States and the former first lady. They still have all of their podcasts up on Spotify, right? Despite all of the controversy, you had Bruce Springsteen leave, which he did a project with the Obamas, but he left the platform in its entirety. But the Obamas are still on Spotify. Now, their contract ends this year. It, it's, it's, I believe it ends up this year. But still, why haven't they made a statement? It would be a huge statement if the Obama said, hey, let's pull our podcast off of Spotify right now. And look, the fact of the matter is they haven't even spoken out against Joe Rogan. They haven't even spoken out. They have remained silent lips are sealed in regards to this situation and i'm puzzled and so in my estimation i just feel that the obamas in this situation are valuing their paycheck over you know standing up for what's right and standing up for their people right that's what they said when they were running yes we can yes we can well why don't you pull your spotify your podcast off of spotify yes you can but you haven't elected to do that yet and i want to know why I really want to know why, because this is a bad look. If the Obamas were to take this stance and say, listen, pull our podcast right now. Do you know how huge that would be? Do you know how game changing that would be? That would really put Spotify in a situation where they might have to pull Joe Rogan off of Spotify. Now, I doubt that that would happen, but it would definitely push the envelope in that direction because that's a big that would be a big loss to lose the Obamas early. Now, look, I know it's testy when you're trying to tell somebody what they should do financially, what's best for them. But the fact that the Obamas haven't even spoken out is just a travesty in itself. They haven't said one word in regards to this situation. Now, they are saying that the Obamas are looking for a new podcasting partner. But the only reason why they're looking for a podcasting partner is due to the fact that their contract ends with Spotify this year. What if it didn't end until two years from now with the Obamas pool? their uh podcast off of spotify i'm not sure because it's a hundred million dollars involved listen i'm just keeping it real it's just so disappointing in my estimation it seems like the people that are put in position that have the same hue as i do that they always fail and miss the bar and when it's time to step up and make a definite stance on something it just seems they become timid and weak in the moment and i'm just tired of seeing it quite frankly but anyway i'm gonna let this go and let y'all have that in the comments Drop down and let me know what you think about both stories that I talked about today. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll get with you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.